Gourd greetings! I have had several requests on how to make a braided leather rim on a gourd. Finally, here it is. This finished gourd is actually a um, demo from my Celtic Design for Gourd Pyrography course. It is an online course, and if you're interested in learning how to do Celtic Design, especially for gourd pyrography, check out the description below. I will leave a link for that. But before we get into it, uh, please consider supporting me by liking this video with a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. It will not cost you a penny. If you would like to go a step further, um, I also do have a number of online courses available on gourd craft. Um, mainly gourd pyrography and also you can visit my website I do have an online gallery with gourds available for sale so I will leave a link for all of those things in the description below okay let's get gourding let's go over what tools and materials you will need first you will need a finished gourd to work on that means all of your artwork inside coating and any protective coating is dry Use a 1 8 inch drill bit to drill holes fairly close to the edge of the rim. I like to make them about a half inch apart. For the lacing material, I use 1 8 inch Superior Calf Lace by Tandy Leather. I will put a link for this in the description below. You may use this braiding technique for any material, however, if you don't want to use leather. You will also need two prong lacing needles also available from Tandy Leather. There will be a link in the description for this as well. Some other things that you will need are a pair of pliers, an awl, a craft knife, super glue. I like to use Loctite super glue gel and a small pair of scissors. I like to use about a double arm length of leather to get started. You want to work with as long a piece that you can manage without it getting too tangled up. So I just stretch out like this and that's the length that I use. So you want to snip it and then I'll show you how to prepare it to put it on the two prong needle. So first I'll show you how this actually works. As you see um, we're not threading this through an eye of the needle, otherwise that would make it way too thick to work with. So um, this has two little prongs and those snap into the leather piece, okay? And because this leather piece is so thick, what I do is I use a craft knife just to taper this on the inside and I'll show you what I mean. So this is the shiny side is your outside piece and then it's a little bit rougher on the inside. So that's the part I'm going to shave out a little bit. And just a little bit, just to give it a little bit of a taper. See how that is tapered on the end now. So I'm gonna take my, my prong needle and the prongs are going to go at the top on the shiny part. So I'm just going to spread that out, insert into the needle, and then use my pliers to squeeze it shut. And you'll hear it kind of snap in there and the, need, the prongs will be in there nice and snug. I like to start working somewhere on the side of the gourd and what you want to do to start is kind of imagine um, five holes. So you're going to take five holes and you're going to imagine each one to be numbered one, two, three, four, five. Now the pattern you want to write down, get a piece of paper and a pencil, is three, one, four, two, five dash three. So what that means is we're going to start on the third hole, go to the first, then the fourth, the second, the fifth, 
and then back to the third. This is probably the trickiest part of this entire gourd is just getting it started. After you get past this, the rest of it is a piece of cake because it is, it is a repeating pattern. So I'll show you what I mean about getting this started. Okay, so I'm going to go into my third hole, which I'm imagining is this one. And I'm starting my first one with the uh, finished side of the leather down. And I'm gonna pull it almost all the way through. I'm gonna leave about a two to three inch tail that I'm going to be using later for at the very end and that's why we want to put it in with the shiny finish side down because this is going to come back up later and around okay so one thing you want to frequently be checking is that you are not twisting your leather at all so I hope I'm always making sure that there are no twists in my leather it happens and when it happens it's just a matter of taking out the needle and uh, re-threading it but if we can avoid it that would be great so now i'm going to go into the first hole so if this is the third that's the second and that's the first and i'm going to go in there And you don't need to pull it super tight, but you just want it to be snug. And now I'm going to go to the fourth hole. And again, just making sure I don't have any twists. Okay, there's the fourth. Now into the second. And the fifth. And back to the third. So what I'm gonna do here is actually thread this under the fourth. Then just move this out of the way like so and I'm going to angle it so that this is up the shiny part so you see how I kind of have that going on in an angle and pull that through. Okay, so this is how it's going to look for your first five holes. Now the next part, um, I recommend having an awl. And the reason is we are going to be threading it underneath this next one on the inside. I want to make sure that you can see that really well. So this is the the lace that just went into that third hole or your starting hole and you are going to lift this one up right next to it to the right if you are looking at it on the inside it's to the right so I like to just tuck an all in there just to make a little bit of space And I'm gonna thread that right through. Oops. 
making sure there's no twists. Okay. Which I think I got a little bit of a twist. Nope, nope, it's good. Okay. So now this is going to go over into the next open hole. And you always want to make sure that the way you thread it will always have that shiny finished side on the outside. And then the next part is you're going to go back to this hole. So you, you go to the sixth, now you're going to go back to the fifth and you are going to tuck this under this one. If you need to use an awl, you just kind of tuck that, lift that up a little bit so you have room for your needle. And then you can see that's kind of naturally laying this way. It's going to go into this hole. Now the rest of this gourd is going to be finished with those two stitches all the way around the rest of the gourd until you get to the very end. So let's do a few more. Here's the one that I just went through. So the next one is going to be just to the right of it on the inside. Put an all in there just to give it a little lift. Make sure that the leather lacing is not twisted and just tuck that through. And it's going to go over into the next open hole. and back. Underneath the one before it. And into the one before that. And again, if you're, you get stuck, just look, you've already done this one. Um, it's kind of laying right over the hole where it's supposed to go. And if you need, sometimes the all is helpful if you get a little bend in your leather, you can kind of lift it up a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate this one more time for you. But this, again, is the same pattern now that you're going to use the whole way around the gourd. So here is the leather lace and the hole that it was in right here that it came through right there. And we are going to go into the, underneath the next one to the right. So I'm just going to stick this all in here just to lift it out a little bit to make it easier for me to insert the needle. I'm going to make sure that my leather lace is not twisted. Just run it through my hands, make sure it's not twisted. I'm going to go in and underneath, put that right through. Take it all out. OK, 
again, just make sure you're not getting a twist. And into the next available hole. Then up and over through the one to the left underneath. And then the next one to the left. It's a little tight, but you want it to be a little bit tight. There you go. So you can see that braid coming together. So we're going to take a look here. Um, the length of lace that um, was my double arm wide was not quite enough to make it the whole way around the gourd. So I had to add an extra piece of lace to this. So um, I'm going to show you how I did that. Um, right now I have this um, clamped together with a little clothespin. It is the two pieces that are glued together. Um, what I try to do is choose an area to cut the leather lace so that it, would, it will be hidden, whether it is um, under, the, I'll plan it so that it's going underneath another piece of lace, or in this case, it's going to be going right into that hole and you are not, the this little area where it's glued together is actually going to be inside the gourd. So in order to join a new piece to your old lace, what I do is on the, um, the piece that you are, are weaving, you're going to cut on an angle the top like so. And it will be tapered like this. And then for the piece that you're going to join to it, you will cut the underside on an angle as well. So that you will also have a taper going the other way. And then you can glue these two ends together. And as you can see with the two tapers, that way the thickness is not going to change very much. So what I do is I just take a little drop of the super glue gel. Just a tiny bit, you don't need much. And attach my, my new piece. And then I will just clamp that with Close pin and wait for that to dry. Now I am at the end here and I just want to show you what that looks like and how I go about tackling this. Um, so I'm at the point now where I want to go into this hole. We'll get that one in here. Okay. Now I'm going to come back over this way. into this hole.
again using the awl. Get in here. So now we are going to go over this one and under here. And these two are actually going to join. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do in order to make these join is I'm going to cut these so that they're going to join on the inside down here, right down in there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to cut this one here, and I'm going to tuck this one underneath instead, and then um, I will taper them off and glue them together. So you can see that this is. I'm going to go under like so. And it'll be a little bit awkward, but I am going to take my knife and um, taper here and then glue them together. So what I'm going to do is just cut this and taper it on the inside so that this short piece can just tuck under here and then I will glue it over top. And it'll be almost an invisible join. If you don't know to look for it, you're not really gonna see it. Well, again, thank you so much for watching. Here is the finished project. I hope you enjoyed this and that you will give this a try and that you will find that once you get that repeating pattern down, it's actually quite simple to do. And this is just one of many ways to finish the rim of a gourd. What is your favorite way to finish the rim of a gourd? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, happy gourding. Mm -hmm.